the digestive tract. We're starting at the throat, which is right here, just underneath the root of the helix at the top of the ear canal, right here, the throat. This is a very important point because it's the beginning of the respiratory system as well as the digestive system. Following the track for the digestive system, we have the esophagus wrapping around the underside of the root of the helix here. So that would be about the end of the esophagus here, which is the beginning of the stomach area. The stomach comes out here. This is the boundary of the stomach here before point zero, and then it comes out here. There will be more of the stomach on the left ear, and so the area of the stomach on the left ear will be larger. Okay, the center of the stomach would be here. Okay, so throat, throat, esophagus, stomach, and we're coming around the top edge of the root of the helix, so the duodenum would be about here. This is the beginning of the colon. To get to the colon, we need to peel back the ascending helix. So the colon runs from the duodenum here all the way to about here. Here begins the rectum until we get to the anus. Okay, so duodenum, colon, and then rectum, and anus here. So, so between these two are the colon, Between the red one and the black one here is the rectum. And then right beside the black one is the anus point. Here. Another very important part of the digestive system, of course, is the liver. Only on the right side, the center of the liver is about here. Now, depending how diseased the liver is, it could be a larger area, or on a healthy liver, it could be a small area. That's the digestive system. The respiratory system starts at the throat point, and this time, instead of wrapping around the root of the helix, we come down toward the lower concha. This is the trachea, and then the bronchi, and into the lung area. The lung is the deepest point in the lower concha. That's the lung. Trachea would be here. Bronchi would be here. And this, of course, would be the same on both ears. Now the lung area is an area around this point, remember. Typically you're going to find an active point right in the deepest point of the lower concha. The pancreas is on both sides and it's in the center of the upper concha here and here. Right beside the pancreas on the left is the spleen point. Pancreas, spleen. So in the same spot on the other side is also part of the pancreas, but then beside that we have the gallbladder. Okay, so pancreas, 
gallbladder. The bladder is along the lumbar spine area, down on the floor of the concha, right against the wall, right here, but on the floor of the concha. The ureter runs along this wall as well. So bladder and the ureter runs along this wall like this. Bladder. And then the ureter is here. It's a line. The ureter is a line that runs along this wall. And then the urethra is here. And you can remember that because the, the urethra is more external than the ureter. And then that leads to the penis clitoris point, which is here. And the penis clitoris point is also a functional point called frustration. Another very important part of the urogenital system, of course, is the kidney. Kidney area is in here right at the base of the triangular fossa, here. So you want the angle of the needle to be at a 45 degree angle, not straight up and down. If it's straight up and down, then you've hit the ankle point. If it's at a 45 degree angle, then it's on the wall, and that's the kidney area. Again, you want to find a point in that area that's tender to make sure you're hitting an active point. And that's the urogenital system. The point that we consider as the heart point is the motor heart. So these are the muscles of the heart. So you go but somewhere between T4, T7, up onto the scapha. This area, you'll find the motor heart. To find the uterus, you follow the antihelix underneath the helix to the inner edge. So this is what your needle will look like when it's coming out. It's the inner edge right here. If you have too much trouble finding the uterus point underneath, you can also treat it from above. It's ideal to treat it from underneath, but you can also have a qu quite a good effect from above as well. Next we're going to go down to find the ovary point, which is halfway between point zero and the uterus, again on that inner edge. If you have a lot of trouble, again you can treat it from the top, but it has to be right on that edge. But it's ideal if you can to treat it from the underside. Now between the uterus and the estrogen point, or the ovary point, the structure here is the fallopian tube, okay? So anywhere along here, you can treat the fallopian tube and you can do that on the outer edge. And on a male, this would be the prostate point. And this, of course, would be the testes point. So there you have it.